for a couple of years under what was called a pandemic. And of course, it had an impact on most or all of us. And um, uh, as we can see, all of these events as they are unfolding in front of our own eyes, I think what Pastor Livio will present during this weekend um, will help us come closer to the Bible prophecy and to the Lord that has control over uh, events and things that happen in this world. So just briefly to introduce <clears throat> Pastor Livio uh, to the Royal. Uh, many of you know him, but for those that don't, don't know him, uh, he resides now in Roanoke, Virginia, but comes from um, communist Romania, where uh, his background was uh, uh, atheist in his childhood, you know, in those days as people. But he can tell more about that. And his conversion to Christ and finding the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a, uh, it's a, a tremendous experience. So I hope he will share more with you. And... Um, as we go through uh, this weekend and the presentation. So, uh, Pastor Olivia, I invite you to present the first study tonight. Thank you. Good, in good evening, everyone, and uh, happy Sabbath for those that are accustomed with this expression. Uh, I am here in Puslich. It's a place uh, that has a lot of history. <laughs> I remember um, the, uh, I think that the year two 2000, I guess, was the first time when I authored a prayer here in Post Lynch. And I remember the comment of Brother Joe Zick. I'm not quite sure if he's here or not. I hardly uh, engaged a few words in English, and the society of Post Lynch was, uh, uh, expressed a lot of patience with me. And I am very, very grateful to them, even in these days. Uh, brothers and sisters, even though uh, we have a lot of memories, uh, sweet, bitter, bitter, sweet, by God's grace, we conclude the idea that we are not an expired generation. We are here for a purpose. Now, the subject tonight is just the preamble of the, the entire cycle that we will engage for tomorrow morning, uh, uh, tomorrow afternoon, and uh, Sunday. I am a non-conventional speaker, so I don't abide much about the protocol uh, and the official perspective of society. I try to stay as biblical as possible, and I hope that I will not make your life miserable tonight. But uh, I want to ask you a question. What would you prefer to hear tonight, a beautiful sermon or an honest? Sermon. An, honest sermon. an honest sermon, yes, because sometimes, what is the difference? Uh, you can have a beautiful sermon and an honest sermon. An honest sermon is always beautiful, but not always a beautiful sermon is honest, correct? So we better stay on the safe side having the honest sermon, and uh, then uh, by default will be a beautiful sermon as well. I just came from Mexico. Uh, they had a national congress um, last week. And man, oh man, I had I had a privilege to shake hands with 1,000 people, 700 people that were church believers, and uh, another 300 visitors. It took me 52 minutes to shake hands with 1,000 1, people. And then I understood the, the, the advice of Jethro, you know, the father-in-law of Moses. And I said, wow, this, this is a considerable amount of people to stay to shake hands with 1,000 people, 52 minutes. It takes a lot of patience. Everybody smiles in different uh, frame and shape. Uh, everybody try to embrace you with his personal uh, DNA and so on and so forth. But 1,000 people in 52 minutes, it is uh, quite an experience. Now, when we come back to our humble state here tonight, I would like to speak about the war of tomorrow against the present truth or the truth of today. You know, uh, the Bible verse, uh, it is, I hope that my remote control will work. It's a, uh, it, nothing new under the sun. For the great day of his wrath uh, is come. And who shall be able to stand? Now, obviously, in today's society, we have two forces that are colliding. You know, the forces of evil that try to take over the world and the mind of the people, and the forces of God that try to limit and restrain sin on planet Earth. Obviously, uh, if you remembered 50 years ago, especially those that came from different countries, Canada, it's, it's, a, it's a country of adoption for many people, you know, including myself and some of you. But do you remember 50 years ago, your grandparents didn't hear about B12 and depression? 
50 years ago, people didn't talk about stress. They were walking in a field all day long and they will come back in the village as tired as they were. Uh, they had sufficient sun exposure to stay in the street and talk to the neighbors. Today, we do have multi-platforms, you know, media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, all these platforms. And we communicate electronically and we lose the dynamics and the tempo of society. We lose the ability to naturally communicate to each other. The more friends we have on Facebook, the stranger we are towards the people around us. This is a phenomenon. That's why we are living in a generation, especially the teenagers, the young people. I flew from Atlanta to Johannesburg, 17 hours and a half. And I saw a mother with a three years and a half a little girl gave him the tablet for 17 hours. That little girl didn't scream, didn't do any fussy behavior just because she was captivated. She was entertained by the tablet. And I, I, I was just biting my tongue. Should I talk to that mom? Don't kill your daughter. Don't put in the hands of your daughter the tablet overnight. I mean, most of the, I, I went to the bathroom a few times, you know, in 17 hours. And I saw over 600 people, as many as were in that plane for 17 hours, hooked into movies, cartoons, whatever they are. And I was wondering for myself, if you will force them to do that, they will not find pleasure in that. But because just you let them to be free. We are living in a fatal generation, brothers and sisters and friends, when a, a society is, is bombarded and the new generation is bombarded with a variety of options. And when you have so many options, you lose track of your identity. We are living in a time of crisis. We lose our identity. We don't know who we are, what is our purpose in, in today's society. And the wrath of the Lord is coming to confront what's happened today in the world. Uh, in the book of Esther, uh, chapter 4, verse 14, we do have a statement. We are here on purpose. You do have a purpose, brothers and sisters. Friends, you do have a purpose. You do exist. And because you have a purpose. And there is a difference between to exist or to live for something. So I hope tonight we leave this place with a concept that we do live not only exist, we do have more than, uh, 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 um, uh, 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 I would say, uh, uh, senseless existence. We do have a purpose for, for, for what we uh, live. And um, uh, uh, just a question, do you know why the book of Esther does exist? Why is the book of Esther written in the scripture? This book is an accident. The book of Esther was written because the people of Israel did not want to leave Babylon at the end of the 70 years of uh, bondage. The history says that the Jewish nation became so accustomed with, with the rituals of Babylon, with the lifestyle and the luxurious lifestyle of Babylon the Great. And even though there were voices, hey, Time for bandage is done. You must go back to your country. And the people of Israel didn't want. And few generations after, you have the genocide that was plotted by, what was the name of the guy? Naaman. Yeah, um, Haman. Haman. You know, so that's why you have the book of uh, Esther. The book of Esther is the proof of uh, the fact that the people of God did not listen to the call out of Babylon. Uh, when the Lord talked to them. That's why you have the book of Esther. If they would have left when God told them in the first generation, get out, you would not have had the book of Esther. Someone addressed the question uh, a couple of days ago. I had the regional meeting with all the European countries via Zoom. And we do have a, an outreach every uh, Tuesday afternoon. And somebody asked me, what would have happened if God could not have said about Job, this is my what? The Lord used the name for Job. I mean, an attribute. Who is this Job? God praised himself with a man on planet Earth. What was the specific attribute that God shared with, with, uh, with, uh, with the devil when he says, did you see whom? My my servant, but what type of servant? Was that righteous? 
and, and the gentleman addressed the question, which was very legitimate. How about if God could not have said about Job that it was righteous servant? Well, simple. If we would not have had a righteous servant like Job, there would not have been written in the Bible a book of Job. Clear? But because there was such an example, God decided to have that memorized in the scripture for a purpose. You can be a Job. I can be a Job. We can be a righteous servant of the Lord. So, uh, when we talk about uh, this war of information, uh, we passed through a crisis, terrible crisis. I didn't come to Canada since 2019 or even before. Uh, and uh, we have seen what happened when an international crisis occurred. Actually, we, have, were, we were preaching about this and we were waiting for events like this. Just when they came, not everybody was ready to perceive them in the right uh, light. Uh, uh, I have uh, stumbled off on, a, on a Chinese proverb that says that a wise man makes his own decisions. An ignorant man follows public opinion. How many people did do this in the time of crisis? A wise man makes his own decision. Why? Because he has a critical thinking. Because a man that is wise is always filtering information, doesn't swallow all the garbage that is presented. An ignorant man follows public opinion because doesn't have a way of critical thinking. What is very interesting, Revelation 12, 17 says, And the dragon was wrath with a woman and went to make war, uh, made to, uh, ma uh, went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So at the end of the day, beside these political factors that are fighting in the world, the ultimate target is you. Brothers and sisters, at the end of the day, all the politics, all the intrigues, all the wars, all the starvation, all the deprivation, all the economical collapse will target, will point out one single group of people. Those that love the Lord Jesus Christ, respect the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. In reality, uh, I have, uh, I'm not quite sure, did you notice uh, that the movies that Hollywood, I mean, I, I lived in the L.A. area for a couple of years. Do you know that Hollywood increased the uh, uh, um, um, religious production with 37%? And here I have, in fact, uh, year by year, uh, for your, uh, the list of apocalyptic films. Apocalyptic, uh, apocalypse, it's a word from Greek, yes, which means revelation, yes, apocalypsis, the discovery, the revelation. Hey, Hollywood smelled that uh, it, is, it, is, uh, it is very desirable for humanity to hear about something that is the end of the world, uh, about calamitic proportions, and they increase the promotion of religious movies with, with, the, with, this, uh, with this religious flavor with 37%. In fact, year after year, if you look here, uh, we have from 1960, 1969, 1970, 1979, and you will see, brothers and sisters, how this, uh, this, uh, all these list with names of movies have been increased up to the present time and here is this is 20 2010 2019 it tripled in movies that speak about the end of the world uh, the book of apocalypses revelation destruction of humanity and who's on whatever uh, uh, religious uh, flavor you may wish so what is very very interesting um, in this context is that uh, in one day I stumbled on a movie that is called The War of Tomorrow and it's interesting that this movie has been uh, introduced uh, in America and especially LA in a day of Friday in a Friday this movie has been presented for the first time The War uh, of Tomorrow for those uh, that uh, uh, know uh, that is the history this is something that is uh, presented by the most translated author of the world after the scripture is the eight most important American person. Uh, uh, her name is Ellen G. White. It was an author. There is a book called Smithsonian. And uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, book, uh, this, I'm sorry, it's a magazine. Uh, this uh, magazine, Smithsonian, has condensed first hundred American people that were the most significant people that brought 
or impacted American society in a positive way. So guess what? First man uh, that is in this uh, Smithsonian magazine was Abraham Lincoln. Number eight is Ellen G. White. The most translated person after the scripture in all the history of humanity. So what, is, what she writes uh, uh, to set the stage for what I want to introduce, says history rec rec records uh, 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 a preparatory step towards the persecution of any race or people group is uh, a process of dehumanization. So this, is, this movie, The War Against Tomorrow, has something to do with the Sabbath keepers. The film leans towards that by viewing Sabbath keeping as something hostile alien. Non-human species from space would do as part of strategy to wipe out all human life. To hate the aliens is to hate everything about them, even their weekly day of rest. Interestingly, the conflict is triggered by a global warming. This is the movie that occurred in, in July, if I'm not mistaken, July 28th. I may be wrong, but it was a Friday anyway. So what is very interesting about this, that in the future, the whole world called to unite uh, to fight against aliens who keep the Sabbath. So it's a science fiction movie. Some bad guys are coming from outside of uh, Earth, but they are Sabbath keepers like you and me. Can you imagine? And st st I mean, it's just the beginning of the movie. And they say, if possible, search and destroy them uh, until uh, 2030. In this conflict, the Sabbath will be the special point. And now I'm coming back to the author, Ellen G. White. In this last conflict, the Sabbath will be the special point of controversy throughout Christendom. Secular rulers and religious leaders will unite to enforce the observance of, of another day, the day of the sun, and um, as milder measures fail and most oppressive laws be enacted, and so on and so forth. The, I'm now I'm coming to this movie, and I'm not quite sure if it's accident or manipulation, but look at the trail uh, of the movie. Uh, these people that are coming from, uh, I don't know what planet, is, they are called white sparks. Uh, maybe have to do something or lead our mind with the A.G. White, you know, who wrote about the keeping of the Sabbath. They are called white sparks, these bad guys that are keeping the Sabbath. They keep the Sabbath. They have a very strong immune system. This is what it says in the movie. The movie says that these people that are keeping the Sabbath, they have a very strong immune system. And you may ask yourself, why? Because they are vegetarians. In movie, these aliens, these bad guys, are, they are keeping the Sabbath, they are vegetarians, and they have a strong immune system. And guess what? In the movie, they say, we must invent a vaccine to lower their immune system to kill them all. I mean, I don't know exactly if it's an accident or not, but it just, you know, I, I don't want to instigate anybody to go to watch the movie. It's a psycho, uh, uh, science fiction and so on and so forth. But however, to play with the minds of the young people, the new generation, which I call the, the generation of the young people of today is the, the genera oh, fatal generation because they have so much variety of choices that they are mesmerized by the multitude of options. And that's why young people be very uh, careful. What do you watch and what do you see? Because the exposure to manipulation is so powerful that you cannot even imagine. And I'm sorry to say, but even adults, they are manipulated. Not I don't want to blame the, the, the teenagers. But this, this phenomena is they are called white sparks from Ellen G. White to keep the Sabbath, to have a strong immune system. They are vegetarians and let us vaccinate to kill them all in the movie. And then Friday was played, the war of tomorrow, the, the, uh, tomorrow being the Sabbath day, because they played the Friday, uh, the movie was played Friday, and it was, the title was the war against tomorrow, but tomorrow was the Sabbath day. I'm not quite sure if this is manipulation, if this is accident, if this is science fiction, I have no idea, you know, like uh, we had this cursed virus that killed people and so on and so forth with COVID-19. Oh, uh, brothers and sisters, we have... Uh, a statement about health and, uh, and, uh, uh, and diet and alcohol and cigarettes and fruits and vegetables and vaccination or vaccination in one place in the screen in the principles of our faith, uh, principle number 19. I'm not quite sure if it's accident or not, but you have COVID-19, a cursed virus, and you have a, an alarming point of view in our church in principle 19. 
it would be a coincidence because that effect, uh, uh, that statement about the, 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 the health and so on and so forth is in principle number 19 against what came in 2020, uh, COVID-19. But the statement of, in principle 19 is made in 1925. 1925. So it must be an inspiration or an accident. I have no idea. You judge for yourself. Now, when we go a little bit farther, Psalm 11, verse 2. For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon uh, the string, that they may privily shot up, uh, at the upright in heart. So, brothers and sisters, we are dealing... I'm uh, sorry, I, I forgot to, to, um, to go uh, with the slides. Yeah, so here are the uh, stuff. Yeah, here we are. So uh, what is very interesting is that the plot against pe uh, the people of God is done behind the curtain. The wicked bend their bow and they are ready to destroy and to kill the people of God. But and they, to, 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 to kill who? Upright in heart. Those people who still have moral values in today's society. There is a very interesting, brothers and sisters, that uh, oftentimes we consider science sufficiently moral to be verified. Is that true? If you are an intelligent person, nobody can dispute your moral statute. But this is very, very wrong. Uh, uh, it brings me with the idea, I mean, some of you may have heard about Auschwitz. I've been in Auschwitz. Uh, those who have uh, time and space and money to visit Auschwitz, uh, by the way, you heard about the cities, 15-minute cities. Did you hear about that? Everywhere. Liverpool, I'm uh, sorry, um, uh, the university in, in, uh, in Great Britain, Oxford. Oxford is the first 15-minute city. They are, this, they are doing this all over the world, and they want to divide the world in 15-minute cities. Uh, and uh, if you go to Auschwitz, Auschwitz is a city exactly of the size of 15 minutes. But if you go in Auschwitz and you walk around, I tell you, you lose appetite to smile, to laugh, or to eat for three weeks. I've been there, and I've seen that with my own eyes. Now, some of the survivors have written this statement, and I would like to pay sufficient consideration to understand that science, it's important, but as long as it's moral, can do good to humanity. But when science loses morality, then it's a problem. Dear teacher, I am the survivor of a concentration camp. My eyes saw what no one should see. Gas chambers built by skilled engineers. Poisoned children by skilled doctors. Babies killed by qualified nurses. Women and children killed and burned in acid. And I have more, he says. So I have my suspicion about education. My request is help students become human. Your efforts should never produce trained monsters or experienced psychopaths. Reading, writing, and knowing arithmetic would only be important if they make our children more what, everybody? Human. More human. So brothers and sisters, if you have dark ages, you see, the world is in extremes. We have dark ages, 1,260 years, when dogma, religious dogma, it was acting like a taboo. You could not contest, you could not address any question against the dogma, against a principle uh, that was formed by the tyrannical uh, um, system, religious system of dark ages led by, by Rome, by the Vatican, correct? But now, if dogma, the man in, in, in dark clothes, the priest was replaced with the man in white robes, science. One extreme, Another extreme. What dogma was in dark ages now is the, uh, the, the scientific protocol in the new, in the new civilized uh, world. And that's a dangerous, is dangerous too. And uh, uh, I want to I wanna go to uh, 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 Aldous Huxley. Medical science has made such a tremendous progress that there are hardly a healthy human left. I'm not quite sure if he's right or not, but uh, what the eighth author, uh, the most important eighth personality in America says, the time is not far when the people of God will be called upon the, uh, to, to, to give their testimony before the rulers of the earth. No one in 20 has a real, I'm sorry, yeah, no one in 20 uh, has a realization of what rapid strides we are making toward the great crisis in 
our history. Uh, brothers and sisters and friends, I think that this is a very powerful statement. So the, the, the most translated author, either gender, from all times in the history of the world, after the scripture, says that the time is no far when the people of God will be called upon to give their testimony before the rulers of the earth. What do you think about this statement? So what would you have to say to the rulers of the world? You are people of God. You want to be a people of God. We want to be part of the people of God. Amen? Everybody wants that? So now, if we are in this scenario, which is very happy, we are part of the people of God. Now, if the Lord will say, now, because you are part of the people of God, I want to take you and talk to the ruler of this country or the ruler of that country, what would you say? What would you defend? The time is not far when the, the people of God will be called to give their testimony before the rulers of the earth. No one in 20 has realization of what rapid strides uh, we are making toward the, the great crisis in our history. Uh, I, I know uh, uh, we have a chance to travel in this free world. I remember I had to, uh, I lost connection and it was in the airport in Cincinnati, United States. You heard about the Cincinnati, the city, correct? So uh, while I was uh, in love with some of the historical aspects of that city, uh, I said, let me kill the time. So I start to talk to a gentleman beside me. How are you, sir? This and that, you know. So are you from here? He says, yes, Cincinnati, Cincinnati. Okay, cool. Uh, so I said, why, why is the, the name of your city called Cincinnati? He said, sir, I'm sorry, honestly, I don't know much, but uh, do, you, do you know who, who, who Cincinnati was and so on and so forth? So um, at the end of the day, we discussed, we reached the expression of Cincinnati, Lucius, Lucius Quintus Cincinnati was a farmer in the time of Lat Latium when Roman Empire was not an empire, was not a republic, was just a simple province. And uh, the, some uh, wild uh, tribes uh, like Sabaeans or whatever, they were attacking Latium. And uh, Senatus Populus Ce Romanus, the Senate and the people of Rome, tried to uh, defend themselves. And they tried to find this farmer, Lucius Quintus Cincinnati, to defend them. So in order to become the dictator in the time of war, uh, Lucius Quintus Cincinnati has been invited by the Senatus Populus Ce Romanus and gave him the scepter, the, the symbol of dictatorship and supreme authority in the, in the province of Latium in those days. So he went, he, uh, he merged the, the fighting people of uh, uh, Rome at that time. He won, he managed to deliver Latium as a province. He went back to Senate and he gave back the scepter, the symbol of power. But the, the, the people were so excited about Lucius Quintus Cincinnati. So, no, 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 we want, you managed to deliver us. We want you to be dictator for life. And the guy says, no. This scepter, which is the symbol of power, belongs to the people. To me, belongs the plow. I'm going back to my farm. Obviously, history writes a lot about the character and dignity of this gentleman that cannot be uh, put together with the uh, emperors that have been born later on once the Republic, Roman Republic, has developed and once the uh, Roman Republic reaches certain economic, uh, economical success, then you have the time when the Republic shifts from Republic to Empire, and that is the time when you have great dictators who didn't survive more than 10, 20 years, readily more than that. And I, I talked to the gentleman, I said, this is the history of, of your city, sir. Wow, so beautiful. Uh, by the way, do you have a religion? I said, yes, I'm a Protestant. Oh, I'm a Protestant too. But how about, what, what is your protest? What do you protest against? Because you call yourself a Protestant. So I said, so, I'm a Protestant. My parents were Protestants and stuff like that. I said, well, well, my parents were not Protestants. By the way, how many of you were born in the church? One, two, three, right there. I, I was born in the hospital. So, so how many of you were born in a church, really? You see, the problem is, it doesn't matter who we are, which are our parents, what are the beliefs of our parents. The problem is, the gentleman was a Protestant, we are Protestants, just because the parents, the grand-grandparents, and they decide. But the gentleman lost the message. What, what do you protest against? What, what is your protest? Do, against whom do you protest? 
So he was a Protestant without a message. That's our risk today. We are people of God. We have a, a message which will be very, very upfront with the powers of the world. And yet, the spirit of prophecy says we are called to stand before the rulers of the world. Do we have a message? Against what do we protest if everything is beautiful and nice in this world? You have to put something in your body because you love your grandpa and your grandma. Sweet lies. Now, I want to, uh, uh, there is a, a former super intelligent gentleman, Mike Pompeo, who says, if America is not strong, the world will be at the mercy of tyrants and enter in an era we dare not to imagine. Yes, but the book of Revelation says that, correct? It, the book of Revelation says that nobody shall buy, nobody shall sell. Uh, I just uh, heard in Europe now they have a law. If you buy or you do some transactions before more than 1,000 euro, you get in jail. But it's your money. You didn't steal that. If you want to have 1,001 or 10 euros, and you, for 10 euros you go in jail if you have more than the cash. You know, brothers and sisters, I do really believe that the Lord is coming soon. I do really believe that we are living in, uh, from the eschatological perspective, we live exactly in the middle of Revelation 13. Who doesn't believe or doesn't understand, he's not about the beliefs. Those people who do not understand that we are living in the great controversy, Revelation 13, I think uh, it's, 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 uh, we, we are preparing ourselves for a great deception. And I hope that the Lord will, will spare us and will help us to understand the great, um, uh, um, uh, the great test that we have to pass uh, in this world. Um, and I would, like to, I would like to share with you a few of the statements uh, uh, recently. I'm not quite sure if you heard, but um, uh, recently in America, in our beautiful country, uh, it, it was officially acknowledged uh, the real assassin uh, that took the life of uh, JFK uh, and killed him, basically. So we do have that statement publicly is vehiculating everywhere in America. But it's pity that the truth surfaces after 60 years or more, you know. However, uh, if to associate the, the, the heroism and the penalty and the pay, the price this man paid for speaking the truth, I just want to pass quickly uh, to read a few of the statements that made him to disappear. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society, and we are as people inherently and historically opposed to secret societies. Do you understand why this guy died? And uh, we have another statement, because uh, I don't want to read everything to waste your time. I do not intend to allow to permit the extent that it is in my, uh, it is in my control. So he said that I'm opposing to what's going on and so on and so forth. And uh, what is very, very courageous on his side is for we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on convert means for expanding its sphere of influence, of infiltration instead of invasion, of salvation, uh, subversion instead of election, of intimidation instead of free choice on uh, guerrillas or guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. So uh, his final statement before he was assassinated obviously uh, makes a lot of sense. It is a system which has conscribed uh, vast human and material resources into the building of a uh, tightly neat, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Brothers and sisters, these were his last words. That's why we are living in a world where truth, you know, we talk, we have a saying in, I was born in Romania, I think that my accent betrays me, is that true? So we do have a proverb in Romanian language that the, the freedom of the dog is equal with the length of the chain. So you, every dog has a chain in, back in time, you know, now we don't have, uh, the man is in chain and the dog is holding the leash, yes? It's the opposite. 
But in Romania, we have that uh, knowing and I mean, living in a communist country uh, with <laughs> I, I have a lot of uh, uh, former Yugoslavian brethren around here, Serbian, Croatians, whatever. But Tito was a superstar. I mean, uh, comparing with our psychomaniac that was Ceausescu. Yes. So 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 we had that that the freedom of a dog is equal with the length of the chain. And that applies today in our civilized world. It is uh, when I came, um, you know, I, I stayed in Canada from 2000 to 2006, roughly, more or less. I don't remember exactly. But I went to 2002 to visit the uh, University of California. You remember that the communists collapsed in 1989, correct? And uh, someone uh, tells me, Lydia, do you know who is teaching scientific socialism in the University of California? I said, I don't know, Gorbachev. I said, for Christ's sake, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I mean, we believe that the, 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 the communist has collapsed, and all of a sudden, Gorbachev is coming, the former USSR president, to teach students in a free world what communism disguised is, scientific socialism. So I think that is very embarrassing that the freedom is lost, brothers and sisters, and the chance to express yourself freely in society brings us to the last stage of the great controversy that is displayed in the book of Revelation chapter 13. Um, I have a statement from Psalm 31 verse 18 that says, let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak gravest things proudly and contempt uh, contemptuously against the righteous. You know, when we talk about media and how it impacts the young people and the adults in today's society, there are two statements that I would like to come closer to a conclusion of tonight's subject, uh, um, uh, Minister of Healing. The very act of looking for evil in others develops evil in those who look. Is that interesting? How many people act based on fear factor? The very act of looking for evil in others develops evil in those who look. And another statement, the following, is by dwelling upon the faults of others, we are changed into the same image. So if we, young people, if you watch a movie, action, people are killing people. That's a bad movie, correct? But what is the message that is encrypted in your brain and in my brain? By dwelling upon the mistakes and the crimes and everything that we see in the moon, that movie, you know, we are changed into the same image. That's why I do believe that what happens today in this uh, delivery of information, especially when we talk about entertainment industry, it's absolutely destroying the mind of the new generation. It's very, very unfortunate. So I do believe when we read uh, in the book of Revelation the idea that we have uh, a system that is so global that will have the power to take away from you the bread and the water and everything and from me. But God promised, God promised that the water and the bread will not miss for those that are faithful to the Lord. We have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God who gave manna, manna to the people of Israel in Old Testament is the same God. He didn't die. He didn't change his character. He really, really wants you to believe him. And that's why he will remove all the, the benefits from society to teach you and me to live by faith alone. When we talk about, uh, I have this book in my office, uh, David Rockefeller, uh, his book, Memoirs. You heard a lot of stories about this guy, but it's interesting to hear not what others say about David Rockefeller. It's interesting to see what he says about himself. Do you think it's interesting? Okay, Rockefeller, we know how people think about you and what, say, what do they say about you. But the problem is that here is uh, the, the image of the beast that is described by one of the brilliant minds that have design work co-participated in this uh, worldwide plot against the Ten Commandments and the law of God and the authority of God on planet Earth. Some even believe we are part of secret cabal working against the best interest of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists 
At that time, they didn't have the word globalist. But now you have, you hear word globalist all over the world. Every time, every day, global is global, global, global. Ever, everything has to be global. So the gentleman was into that. So they said, some believe that I'm part of that, working against the country that I am citizen of, and characterizing my family as having or uh, nourishing the idea of globalism. And uh, what he says, and conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economic structure, one world, which we see and we hear, if you will. So what does he says? If that is the charge, I stand guilty and I'm proud of it. So brothers and sisters, do you know that this book was bestseller? <laughs> the guy says the truth about himself. He makes millions by selling the book and the people of God sleeps. You have a declaration that is official. Uh, I will talk to you about the fact checkers and uh, click uh, uh, erasing documents from internet. I will give you a proof, but uh, not yet. Uh, what is interesting, another gentleman, a former state secretary, that speaks about the New World Order and the globalism and Babel Tower and whatever it's, it's fulfilling in uh, Revelation 13. Uh, it's Henry Kissinger who dreams about the Babylon the Great like Nimrod. And in, uh, in his book uh, says the same thing. Uh, uh, what we Amer in America call terrorists are really groups of people that reject the international system. I mean the globalism. This is what the man says. So the war of yesterday versus the war of tomorrow. Brothers and sisters, unless we are changing our mentality and we transform the Bible in the best TV that we have, we will get lost. The Bible has to be read, studied with tears and prayer and fasting as we never did before. Uh, it is very, uh, a very, very in interesting statement uh, made by Marcus uh, uh, Garvey speaking uh, uh, in uh, uh, Men of Fling ha uh, ha Hell in Sydney uh, in 1937, I guess. He says, we are going to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery, which I think is the most dangerous, because whilst others might free the body, none but ourselves can free the mind. Is that true? So I think that is very, very important. Only by reading the scripture every day, we can, we can get free again as human beings. And uh, in letter uh, 55, 1895, the, uh, uh, this great uh, author uh, says, a lie believed, practiced, becomes as truth to them. By repeating a lie every day, brothers and sisters, the brain will take it as a truth. That's why it's important for us to, to come to a conclusion, read only the scripture. Because the scripture is the only uh, source of information that will deliver our brain from superstition, superstition and darkness. Um, I, wanna, I wanna read, uh, how many of you have heard about the book called Great Controversy? Not many. I, I heard, I read that book seven, eight times. I don't know how many times. There is a statement, uh, by the way, this book was written in 1840, uh, 1848, 1888, uh, reviewed in 1901, 1906, and so forth. But it's interesting that this book was written before the law of copyright exists. You heard about the law of copyright. I think that a, a, a copyright law occurred uh, or took place or appeared, uh, was produced in 1925, 1928, nine, I don't remember, somewhere there. But this book was written before, okay? So there is a statement in this book. If, you, if, you, if we claim that we read the book, I wanna read two statements. And then I wanna tell you, uh, I mean recommend or suggest to you to verify this statement in the internet. Look at this. Let, let us read. The absurd and mistaken doctrines which defend the freedom of conscience are the most pestilentious, pestilential uh, shall errors, a plague which from amongst all is the most to be dreaded in a state. This isn't great controversy. Have you ever heard about it? Did you stumble in this uh, statement? And uh, be, Because it's relevant, and I tell you why. The same, the same pope made anathema and cursed 
all those who defended the freedom of conscience and all those who contest the right of the church to use force. This is a papal bull or decree, if you wish, Pope Pius and uh, the ninth in 15 of August, 1854. You know, in 2001, I was here in Canada and I checked, I went straight to the source to see if this papal bull does exist. And it did exist. It showed up. Now, when I did a recent, uh, recent uh, research to verify the same declaration from Great Controversy, <laughs> guess what? Look at what I received. Blog has been removed. So, brothers and sisters, that's why you need this. The words are flying. The bo the, the, uh, I'm sorry. The words are flying. The written will stay. That's the proverb. Vorba volen in Latin. So once we have the book, trust the book. Because this, with one click, you can erase information. And you can kill someone by saying, Oh, you don't speak the truth. There is no such a thing. The fact checkers discovered that there is no such a thing in internet. It doesn't exist. One click. And that's it. And you, you eliminate everything. But praise the Lord that we have a book. And the book, you cannot erase the book with one click, correct? So that's why I would, I would sincerely invite people to take the Bible and to take the whatever books you have and keep them with you. Every document that I have and I present, uh, I buy the book, I underline, and I have the book with me. When these guys will follow you, he says, Hopes, I have the book. You cannot erase the book, correct? So uh, I believe that the Bible, it's so important. We are living in the book of Revelation, brothers and sisters. And what, what the Pope says that uh, 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 made anathema, basically sent you to hell and cursed all those who defend freedom of conscience and all those who contest the right of the church to use force. It is exactly what we're expecting to happen every day from now on. So I do really believe that uh, what is very interesting, I would like to go to the point of conclusion where um, um, to reconsider Esther chapter 4 verse 14. And who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. The Lord is addressing this question to you personally tonight. Who knows if God does want, doesn't want you to, be, to use you for special work today in society. Esther was a feeble young lady with no experience. And yet he had, she had the courage to stand against the mighty ones. And for this courage, she saved the nation. Imagine if you stand and you have a courage to stand for the Lord. You may save thousands, hundreds of thousands, or maybe millions of people because you, of your dignity, of your reputation, of your courage to stand for the Lord. Brothers and sisters, you remember from 12 to, uh, 2012 to two, um, seven years, I, um, I lost 40 kilograms. I was fasting three days per, per, per week almost for seven years. I was in the valley of shadow of death. I feared death every day. And whosoever is brought to such an experience, you go through the valley of shadow of death and you get out a, a different person or you don't get out at all. That's why today, if you are led to a little bit of suffering, is because the Lord is preparing you for a great solemn time. And it is my wish and prayer that uh, today you can say, together with Esther and Mardukai that was providentially telling to Esther, who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time uh, as this. The Lord bless us and give us uh, a, a purpose because you do exist. You have a purpose to be accomplished. And uh, I believe that what is very important for us is to keep our eyes towards Jesus. If they kept their eyes fixed on Jesus, who was just before them, leading them to the city, they were safe. This was the statement from the impressive dream that she had in one day. If we keep our, our, our eyes fixed on Jesus, uh, the, 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 the holy city, the Jerusalem that comes from heaven, it is our safe and it is our refuge, brothers and sisters. Evidently, the owl outcome is the following. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the, the knees which have not bowed into Baal, and every mouth 
which had no kissed him. And what she says at the end is that in Africa, in the Catholic lands of Europe, in South America, in China, India, in the islands of the sea, in all the dark corners, no, uh, no, or of the earth, God has in reserve a firmament of chosen ones that will yet shine forth amidst the darkness revealing clearly to an apostate world the transforming power of obedience of, uh, to his law. And what she says, even now they are appearing in every nation, among every tongue and people. And in the hour of deepest apostasy, when the devil's supreme effort is made to cause all bold, small, and great, rich, and poor, free and bond, they will stand for the truth. And I wish that tonight, all of you, including the little ones, to be part of that and to discover the purpose for which you are alive. And today, it was a day that was given by God with a solemn purpose for you and for me. It is uh, my wish and prayer tonight to understand that the, the, the days are counted. The freedom, the liberty we enjoy, it's going to end very, very soon. Brethren, I preached the gospel for 33 years. You know me, some of you. I preached about the New World Order and all these crazy things that happen today. Uh, for 33 years, but yet when this stuff came in 2019, it took me by surprise. Imagine people that never studied and never uh, 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 spent time to dig in this situation, how scared they were. And I do, I do, I do believe that the time is coming soon when another wave will come. Our president in America, I have the video clip, by the way, he says, no, the second pandemic sh must come. It must occur. It must come. And we have to get money to be prepared for the second pandemic that it automatically will come. How do we know? Huh. Well, it's raining with prophets. But we have to be ready because we know that the source is in the scripture. Do you remember what uh, the Lord Jesus Christ told to the church? It is, uh, it is Pergamos or Thyatira. It's up to you to choose. Maybe tomorrow morning we can answer to this. But what the Lord Jesus Christ says, you do not know or you are not accustomed with the depths of Satan. Some people know the depths, the, the inner darkness of his science. And that's very dangerous. Praise the Lord that we are away from that. So I hope that tonight we can rest on that stony pillow of Jacob when he ran away from home. And that stony pillow was the pillow where he left, he laid his head as a forgiven sinner. How many of you would like to go home and fall asleep as a forgiven sinner tonight? I mean, I want that. Because you know what, brothers and sisters? At the end, the world will be divided into forgiven sinners and unforgiven sinners. That's all that matters. And I want to be a forgiven sinner because that, that's the most important thing for me, to spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ at, at his feet and to rejoice that beautiful music of his smile and to hear the, the voice. The inspired word says, that, a word says that the voice of Jesus is like the voice of many musics or many, many songs. Imagine how beautiful it is just to hear Jesus talking to you and to ask him, Lord, can you give me permission to lay my head on your chest, to hear a godly heart beating for me. I would like to meet the Lord Jesus Christ on the glassy sea, and I would like to ask him permission to give me chance, a chance to wash his feet with my tears. Maybe you have a sim similar desires. However desire you may have in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, he will fulfill them because he loves you. He loves you beyond your imagination. He loves you beyond you, what you can understand about the character of, of the forgiver. In reality, if you believe that you can be forgiven, is because you believe in the character of the forgiver. If you don't believe the character of the forgiver, you don't believe that you will be forgiven. But I do, and you do, and we do believe in the character and the nature of our forgiver, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you, <clears throat> Pastor Liviu, for this uh, first presentation. Uh, very inspiring, and we look forward to the <clears throat> uh, next one. And tonight, it's the time also to open the Sabbath. Uh, the sun, <clears throat> uh, there was a sunset about a few minutes ago. And we will uh, open the Sabbath and close this uh, presentation with the hymn 382, Soldiers of Christ Arise, 382. Please rise. Prayer and at the same time open the Sabbath and Pastor Livio will lead us in the closing prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we kneel before thy throne of grace to thank you very much for the miracle of today. We have no words of appreciation sufficient to satisfy the dignity and the uh, might of thy personality. We recognize ourselves in the state of misery and sinfulness, and we have no merits to impress you or take you by surprise. But we do believe in the one that you have sent to save us, this glorious name of Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you forgiveness for those days and times when we turn our back towards you, when we betray thy cause exactly in the times when you needed us the most. Today we cannot redeem time. We cannot change the past. But we do believe that you granted us few seconds of grace to change the future. We know that the saints have a past, but we do believe that sinners that are coming to you in true and profound repentance. They have a future. Tonight, we congregated as sinners 
and we would like to exit this church to, tonight as a forgiven and pardoned sinner. We ask you to bless those brothers and sisters, friends and visitors, family members, uh, mothers and fathers, children and, 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 and friends that may need thy presence. We pray for those that are crying silently towards you. We pray that though for those that were wounded. We pray for those that have been, uh, have been uh, destroyed by sin. We pray for those that you have them in your plan for salvation. Heavenly Father, share and extend your mercy towards us, towards our families, to our, towards our brothers and sisters, towards our children, and towards those that are considered our enemies if they do exist. We pray that you help us to bless those that curse us. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to give us strength to turn our cheek on the other side when we are persecuted. We pray, Heavenly Father, to love those that hate us. In the name of Jesus, tonight we would like to rest in you and rest in our Savior, Jesus Christ, friend and unreplaceable elderly brother that saved our lives and wrote our names on his palms in his unique and unreplaceable name heavenly father we ask all these things that my joy to be fulfilled amen So here we come to the end of the <clears throat> first presentation in this cycle, Fatal Generation. Tomorrow afternoon, brethren, as the invitation says, it's four. Uh, originally, we intended for five. So we would like to ask, if possible, tomorrow we have it at five o'clock. There is going to be a choir practice and orchestra practice in between. So if you have invited someone, I hope you don't mind to make that uh, correction. And then Sunday we will have at four o'clock the last the last presentation. Tomorrow the study will be with the people, and then the last one when people are asleep. <coughs> Sunday will be at four o'clock, and um, also tomorrow morning, brethren, uh, our regular Sabbath services starting with nine fifteen with the song service, and then nine thirty with the Sabbath school, and then for eleven o'clock we'll have Pastor Livia as well sharing message. It's not the one that is in this flyer. It's going to be a different one, and I believe it will be a blessing for all of us as well. So um, now I think the sisters um, also have uh, prepared little refreshments, if I'm not mistaken. So we will not tarry long. We would like to come back tomorrow morning on time. So. Uh, uh, at this moment, everyone is dismissed, and we are looking forward to see you tomorrow morning and as well tomorrow afternoon uh, for the second study. Thank you once again, Pastor Livio, and thank you all of you for coming tonight and making this effort, and may God lich richly bless you. Amen. Now we, uh, we are dismissed.